Namaskar. Sri Guru Pyo Namaha. My name is Prakash Rao and I welcome you to the first episode of our new series, Story Time with Carnatic Music. This has been a project which is dear to my heart for a long time and we didn't have the opportunity. Now I'm glad we are able to do it and it is appropriate that the first episode deals with a song about Ganesha, the remover of obstacles. So with my humble offering to Lord Ganesha, let us begin. First of all, let me tell you what the series is about. So many, if not most of Carnatic music compositions are about some god or some goddesses and they are, a, they are written in praise of or they are written as a plea to that god, god or goddess. They refer to some names, the, the gods and goddesses have multiple names and they also refer to some great deeds performed by that god or goddess. And in some cases, when it is written in a particular lo location, the temple, it refers to the myth and the legend of that temple. It's called the Stala Purana. So many singers sing the song and they don't have any idea about what those words mean, what that great deed is that the uh, um, deity pro um, performed and what is the Stala Purana. So when they, when they sing it, they don't put that emotion behind it. And when the audience, audience members hear it, they don't really relate to that song. They just listen to the music. Yes, these compositions are great. All these ancient composers they had great control of the raga. Their lyrics are fantastic. They can, you can talk about their poetry. You can talk about how they weave together so many different syllables into fitting the um, chandas of the song and those kind of things, yes. But we also have to admire the knowledge that these composers have. They have, you know, done dug deep into these songs, these stories in the Puranas, in the Mahabharata, in the Vedas. And they come up with some obscure story that they pull into a song. I'll, um, you know, it is our objection, objective to make these songs more memorable. So when you listen to these songs and when you know the meaning of that one word, you will be able to relate, you will be able to emote, you will be able to enjoy the experience of that one song. That is our hope. So now let's get to the story of this episode, the main story. We have selected the song about Ganesha. We have selected Muthuswami Dikshatar's Vartha Ganapati, which is the most popular song on Ganesha. So let me tell you two stories. One story is dealing with the idol itself. The other story is the story behind the one word, one phrase in that song, Vartha Ganapati. It says, Kumba Sambhava Muni Vara Prapujitam. So first of all, let's talk about the history of the idol. Vata Ganapati is currently installed in Uttrapati Swami temple in Tiruchengattangudi, Tiruvaru. Before this, the ideal used to be in Chalukya Kingdom's capital city, Vatapi, which is today called Badami. So, back in 16, 617, 617 AD, the uh, Chalukya king Pulakesin II defeated the Pallava king Mahindra Varman I and expanded Chalukya kingdom almost to the Kaveri river. So in 642, Mahindra Varman's son Narsimha Varman I, he sent his army under his uh, general Paranjyoti to avenge this insult, this defeat. So Paranjyoti pushed back Chalukya kingdom's army and they went all the way to the capital and Paranjyoti sacked the capital and his loot, his booty, consisted of this temple, uh, this idol, Ganesha idol. So he took the idol and took it to his hometown, Richangatangudi, and put it inside the temple there. And there have been other battles between these two armies, but that idol still remains in that town. So we say Vatapi Ganapati. It's in Tirvarur, but it is referring to the Vatapi Ganapati, which used to be in Vatapi in um, Karnataka. So now let's talk about the one phrase 
in that song kumba sambhavamani vara prapujitam so the sage agastya is referred to as kumbaja kumbayoni kumba sambhava which all mean the same thing he was born in a pot talk about the world's first test tube baby <laughs> in the ramayana it says that rama lakshmana and sita met agastya in his ashram in dandakaranya and there rama requested agastya to tell him where he could stay during his vanavasam and agastya suggested panchavati so that is one episode in the ramayana in another story it is said that agastya put an end to the wicked deeds of two demons vatapi and elvada they were brothers so vatapi did some penance and he got a boon from the gods which said that he could be chopped up and uh, you know mutilated he could just put uh, taken apart in every which way possible but if ilvala called him he would come out he could be reassembled so they used this superhuman power by um what they do is they hatch they they plotted to defeat and kill all rishis that's their hatred for rishis so what they did they would approach the rishis with some feigned reverence and they would say please come and have a meal with us so it was a tradition in india among rishis not to refuse any invitation given to them or reject any food that was served to them whatever was served they eat so ilvala used to chop up his brother and cook that and give that to the rishis after they ate him he would simply say vaat vaat bhi come out and he would come out tearing that body apart and that's how they would kill him kill the rishi so they did this with the few rishis great then they started trying to the same trick on agastya agastya knew what they were going to do so when vatapi got into agastya's body agastya simply digested him so when ilvala called him out he was not there he was not able to come out and ilvala got angry and he tried to attack agastya but agastya uh, defeated him with just a mere thought after that no asura dared attack uh, um, agastya anymore so how did this happen so it says that agastya paid ganesha for the ability to instantly digest whatever he ate so when he was digested vatapi obviously was a part of agastya he was not separate he could not be reassembled because there was nothing to reassemble and that was the boon that was the vara that ganesha gave agastya and that is why this whole phrase happened to be kumba sambhava vara kumba sambhava muni vara prapujitam and uh, so it's about the uh, that phrase let me sign off by um, mentioning some interesting facts about the idol itself dikshit mentions this in the song he, normally ganesha has you know the, the back hands he has got pasham and ankusham the noose and gold and in other hands sometimes he has uh, dantam and sometimes he has um abhay hastam and in the other one he has modakam those are the four things that um generally ganesha has in his hands but in this particular case dikshita says he holds in his back hands vama kara vidruta ikshu dandam sorry that's in the front hand sorry in his hand in his right hand he has ikshu dandam he has a sugar cane stick and then in the other hand he says karambuja pasha bijapuram in the lotus like hands he has pasha that is the nose but instead of ankusham he has bijapuram he has a japamalam in his hands a bead necklace so that is a definition that is the description of the uh, vatapi ganapatin given in the song and this is one of the things which sets apart that particular idol from other idols on ganesha with this we close for today namaskaram i hope you enjoyed this episode i hope you enjoy stories and please stay tuned for more stories from us thank you
Yeah.